Morning, evening, afternoon. You are welcome to the 67th edition of the Take Bull podcast, where we are covering Clonmel, some proper racing on a Thursday. Clonmel Thursdays are a staple of the Take a Bull podcast deck, and it's nice to have them back. How are you keeping? All up? It is, yeah. I, I think you have the stall still up in the corner there. I, oh, I do. I do. No, Thank no, you. Yeah, but, um, um, yeah we, we've covered a lot of Clonmels, but this might be the first Clonmel that wasn't on absolutely bottomless ground now it's it's clonmel and <laughs> i know yeah i'm doing my best i was i was, a, was that bellius town that i was trying to sneak it in after it did so bad in the poll <laughs> <laughs> a pair of bellius towns a pair of bellius towns it, it, it race were yeah they were yeah but um oh that was i don't know looking at this card now i'm not sure whether people just don't like the flower they wanted to give us a challenge because this one's a challenge this is a challenge. Um, well, not maybe a challenge for the listeners to sit through this as well. Uh, yeah, it would only be the diehards that listen to this one. But look, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. That, wait, the best part is because we don't uh, we don't have a sponsor, we can do what we want. And that's yeah, and, and this is what we're about. We're, we're about these running the mill cards. They deserve their time too. Yeah, that's what um, the industry uh, is built on. That's, exactly. the, that's the way we go. Exactly. Well, look, before we start, we are recording on a Tuesday night, uh, just before 10 p.m., so a bit of a late one. Yeah, that's more on May's as well, so apologies for that, deck. But um, I just wanted to touch real co- closely on uh, Sligo. By the time some people listen to this, Keon Donna may have already ran at Sligo. Um, obviously, he runs on Wednesday in the second race, is it? Handicap race? Third race. Third race. Um... Third race. Two mile one. Uh, right, well, so just give the listeners, we may as well... Uh, Give the listeners a bit of a reasoning on why you're coming back to two miles. Um, obviously, you've, you've told me off air, but just to give people a bit more context, what do you think of his chances tomorrow? Because he's, he's been put in as the 11 to 8 favourite coming back in trip. It's very interesting. <laughs> well, he, he was the run out of the stall on Saturday. He had two options there, and the ground just went against him. He, he's quite ground dependent. So, yeah. Um, last Thursday, the morning of decorations, we were um, we, we just kind of hit we were we were panicking a little bit now i did always have a race on this card in mind and um, i did send a, a list to ross and it was the conditions chase but you were always where you were gonna you know willie was gonna run something you get too close mm-hmm. and you didn't want that so there, there, was the horse option, to go. It, there was another option at ross common yesterday at three mile hurdle but we missed the entry for that by the time towards they came around and we made the decision so we were like oh we, we might just have to stick him in this chase and you know, see see what happens. But mm-hmm. I had a look later on. I just thought two mile one. I, I text Ross and I said, Will will we try this? You know, I was jumping my keep him in the race or help him not disgrace himself. Mm-hmm. Um I'll be honest now, the more I think about the race, I'm I'm quietly confident, like, do you know what I mean? I, yeah. Quite, you know, if he gets an easy lead, he's not going to get an easy lead. Actually, he's not going to get an easy lead because Natural Breeze is in here. <clears throat> and I'd say he's going to try a lead as well. But, but Kiandana can travel and he can jump. And, you know, there might be a few in behind starting to panic because he's going to stay. Um, but look, Bolton Glass Hill is in here, isn't he? Imagine if there was any, if there was ever a horse to undo, <laughs> to yeah. unravel down, Donna. <laughs> I, I, I text Philip last night and I was like, you couldn't find another chase. I'd say they're in the same boat as us. They need mm. good ground, but the ground is still, it's a dry track. They don't matter much apart from the bends. So it's still good, good to yielding in places at the moment. So hopefully it stays like that. And um, the other one I'd be um, fearful of is Mark McNiff's Philly. Uh, oh, what is her Red name? Ball of Fire. Red Ball of Fire, yeah. Yeah. I think she could be an each, a decent each way bit um, in this race tomorrow. But look, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to, to seeing him bounce out in front and and enjoy himself and see if he can just put them on the stretch and, you know, we, we jump them into submission. Now, I can say that we all have different things in our mind and then it's, it's left up to Keith and it's always left up to Keith to be fair and, very very rarely gets it wrong like you know one of the best jockeys in the world so hopefully i'm hoping keith's thinking along the, the same lines as me what do you think about um out of curiosity as i know he loves to cheat pieces keeps them sweet and he helps him travel do you think he needs some over two mile one the pieces is it, just, is it just to keep is it just a routine thing now 
Um, yeah, it's kind of like just a routine. Yeah, just anonymous. Oh, really I, I remember talking to Ross after um, Dan Patrick last year when he he, he won, and I was asking him, "Is there a difference in the brown and the white cheek pieces?" And he said, "No, we'd be wearing the white ones again because he's one of them." So um, <laughs> it would be a bit of superstition in it. He ran really, really well without pieces at Dan Patrick on his uh, seasonal debut this season. Yeah. I don't think I don't think he needs them anymore. I just think he's a horse who's really learned his job. You could do anything with him. You could put him anywhere in a race. He just loves it. Like he, he loves racing. So um, I don't think he needs them anymore. But they'll stay on. Yeah, they'll not, stay on. Yes, they're not yeah, harm, are they? Really? No, exactly. Like do you know what I mean. And you know, a day might come where taking them off might get you what you need out of him like you know but i i just think he's i love him i love him like he's just absolutely deadly he's he's some horse to, to be involved with and you can just do whatever you want with him like he's been dropped out he's led you know he's just a horse who's who's learned how to be a racehorse and loves being a racehorse because so many of them and he, and even the, the the ones with the most ability in the world you know they often don't enjoy being a racehorse but this fella he absolutely loves it so it's he's that's what makes him so enjoyable to be involved with as well and every day you turn up he's trying his hardest he's trying not to let you down and even the last day when he was beaten in in Kilbegan, when he really bumped into one he was you know he was upset with himself afterwards he's he's not normally like that he's been used to coming in with his chest puffed out having one mm. one a couple of times but no, he was sad. And uh, no, just, just, yeah. just, just made you love him a little bit more, like, you know, he just he just wants to prove himself and you know, make you happy all the time and you know, he's just he's just deadly. Yeah, there's not many there's not many horses in training as well that can claim to have won over kind of the the shortest intermediate and then staying trips either. So that'd be a nice little feather in his cap as well if he can uh, Yeah, look it, it's something it's something we kind of we, we spoke about it in the early days when he was um rated in the 80s but going over hurdles like it was something we couldn't find a race it was something we'd have to try um go over two miles and you know sometimes the division can be quite poor because the horses aren't great so people think they're slow and or, or want to trip and step them up so it can leave the two mile division you know the not the 95 quite poor so we were going to try it back then, but now, like, um, it's 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 planned. It's it like I know we're kind of left with we've nowhere to go with him, and it, it, like if we want to go to England at the end of the month, he has to run. But I feel a lot more confident about him now, like you know, especially the way he jumps. He jumps so well that I think it's 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 made the decision really really easy. Yeah, there's no no real downside to it, is there? Really, like you just give him a spin, win, lose, or draw, he'll put him right for Cheltenham. Um, I, I think he jump. will take a fair piece of beat. No, like it's not a strong race at all. Um, I come into look at it, I think he's he. I, I'd have him favourite now. Eleven to eight is you know like it, I suppose it's it's probably a matter of what he's up against. I I think, um, because I I'm still convinced he's better than this grade. Um, at any trip, so, um, yeah, look, I I think he's um. It's maybe still still CL is maybe the one that I know that that one's top weight, so he has to give you weight. But like, it's not um like he, he definitely has the ability, and as you said, he jumps and travels. I just don't really yeah, see. Yeah, like I I've he's won, and I've been less confident. You know, yeah, I know he has. He's yeah, won off on his trip, and I've been less confident. I don't think it's the deepest race, but Baldwin Glass Hill is is in here. <laughs> I've been waiting on him to run, and look, you are coming back a trip, and you're. But I, I'm confident that if he, he gets into a rhythm, he could catch them on the hop. Mm. I think he's... Now, look, he beat um, Natural Breeze by eight lengths, and Natural Breeze, I think, is getting £16 or something off him. Um, yeah. Tomorrow, but he could have beaten... He could have beaten Natural Breeze by 100 lengths that day. Like, <laughs> he, he won his down at Tremont. Um And the handicapper knows that because... We got four for not being good enough the last day. Um, like he's walloped us a couple of times now since then. So the handicapper knows as well. I yeah. I could say we have the beatings in natural breeze anyway. He's probably gonna try and make the run with us. But I, I can see definitely see 
Baldwin Glass Hill not being too far away. He likes to race handy. And Mark McNiffs, I think, could be um, a, a decent each way, but I think she could run a, a big, big race off that mark. Well, it's an interesting now race. little bonus content to 225 at Sligo there on on Wednesday. Well, look, very best of luck, Deck. I think he's got a fantastic chance. And look, win, lose, or draw. He puts you right for Cheltenham, and that's where you want to go with him. So. Well, look, that's, that's hopefully, you know, hmm. that's... Um, it would be nice to go, wouldn't it? And it look, you need go. a lot to fall right. You need tomorrow to go right. You need the next few weeks to go right. And you need you need the British handicapper to not, not take the, the uh, yeah. like, <laughs> There's a good chance the British handicapper won't even look at his races. He's just going to look at his form. Loads of ones and twos. Yeah. Yeah. And just <laughs> yeah. Pull, out, pull out a ball <laughs> out of a hat and say, what, what number's on that? So, um look we, we need a lot to go our way yeah absolutely look it, it's look you need a lot to go your way in life not just racing so um yeah. it, it's the way it is yeah like if, if stuff's not going your way stuff's not going your way it's the same and like if it's racing if it's it's the day you're having it's if it's anything but with a bit of luck um yeah. he gets everything look, he needs and I, I think he will to be honest with you and well that would be great like you know it's it, like it'd be great to go to the channel mm. summer nationals in ireland is what i really would like to do with him and I said it the night you won in Kilbegan, like I'd love to be going be back, back there next year. Mm. Going back there and running in the national, like, you know. He's on an upward curve, he needs to keep on an upward curve. And um probably probably needs the handicapper to hammer him a couple of more times. <laughs> but if he can keep coping with it, you know, his summer in, in in nationals will be, you know, those big pots, those big, big races and like for the day out alone, I suppose. Yeah, yeah there's just class horses on them in there. Like you would feel like you like that over the October meeting in Cheltenham for me, like one of those summer nationals would feel like he, he arrived at the big time then, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, look, he, um, I, I think that's definitely in his future, uh, 100%. He'll, he'll definitely run a couple by the time it's all said and done and very best of luck tomorrow. Um, hopefully he comes home safe and look, delivers another win. Be brilliant. Oh. Right, well, on to this very um, industrial kind of, <laughs> What's, is that the card I'm gonna, is, I'm gonna, is industrial the right word it's a proper just a it's just a a card that's just an industry a, card. agricultural is it agricultural yeah it's just this is this is like the, the most primary sector of racing this, this type of card um this is what the the foundations this is what your cheltenham's and your your you know your drf's and your fairy house and punches and this is what it's all built on this is the, if, if if this foundation isn't here none of that is there <laughs> it, this is like the two boys in corks and you know my horse is faster than your horse literally I got an Asian from this church to that church that's it that's where this is where it all comes from so the the kill alone maiden hurdle uh two miles and just shy of a furlong first race on the card deck we have 11 runners and this is one of the most winnable maidens you'll ever see. It's the most winnable maiden I've seen until the next race, really. Um, so, um, yeah, eleven runners. Um, West and Jet making his uh, making her debut for Gordon Elliott. I suppose is a little bit of interest. Uh, Spick and Span only rated ninety eight would have to improve a little bit. Um, Palavi is the one hundred and eight rated uh, gelding for uh, Shark Hanlon. Probably sets the standard, but it has to be vulnerable. I, I've I've came down on by default on Marcus Furious just as I think he may have bumped into a nice enough horse in the shape of Kevin's Pride last time out with Kilbegan. Um I think Kevin's Pride might that, that's John McConnell. I think he's a he's a nice enough sort. Um it it's complete just process of elimination. I'm I'm banking on this horse being, you know, capable enough to go and win a maiden hurdle if he's got him on a point. But who do you like Deck? Yeah, he um he did be Kill KB, who we fancied mm. a lot last week at, at the stall and may have been beaten by the ground. And um, maybe young horses to get a bit stronger. Um, right, so yeah, he was second in that bumper at, at Kilbegan. Um, no, it would, wouldn't be for me. Palavi, he's had plenty of goals now. Um, he's a couple of types, a couple of goals and handicaps as well. Nearly strikes as a horse who's regressing, you know. if if they could be at this stage like you, you like <laughs> it can be at any know. stage <laughs> um look <laughs> it, I, arctic piper has been behind a couple of decent types and usually runs with credit but it's the other mayor i'll go for a mystical goddess 
uh, only a five at all. She's a point to point winner, and the runner up in that point to point has been second at Huntington. Um, I can't believe I, I've gone to second at Huntington Farm for to find the winner of an Irish <laughs> maiden, but this is where we are with this card. I, I'll uh, I'll have a go at Mystical Goddess. Mystical Goddess. Okay, I was actually trying to find. I was looking at Marcus Furious. I was like, I've never heard of Centurion before. His sire. Who the hell is Centurion? Um, and I went. Jeremy. I go to click. I go to click and look him up. No, Joseph O'Brien trained him, but he never raced. He was just in the care of Joseph O'Brien in the family colours. An unraced Galileo brother to Kings Barnes. Uh, very rare these days you see stallions that were unraced. And uh, Marcus <laughs> Furious is his only runner to date, and it appears that Centurion is not available to send your mare to. So um, I don't know if he got loose in the field and, and saw the damn bell steal, and you know, maybe he got lucky. I don't know. But uh, yeah, Centurion with his looks like his only son in the world there. Um, and look, he's already on him one a point to point. Uh, look, I, I think it's a sh it's a it's a dire race really. Uh, but Marcus Furious for me, I think is he's got him one a point, and I think he's he's finished second to a nice horse. I think he's a, a fair chance of winning. Uh, so I'll take that. And Deck, you're on what Spick and Span, is it? I'm in mystical Goddess. Mystical Goddess. Sorry, I was looking at Spick, Spick and Span. Mystical Goddess. Okay, well look, you're in the same same kind of uh, bracket as me, I suppose, as a winner of a of a point to point. Uh, right, on to the 245, then the, the Kilmore Maiden Hurdle. It's eight runners. And as I said, uh, that, that was a tough maiden until you get to this one. Um, <laughs> so, um, but look, again, it's, it's one of these kind of uh, something has to win. Um, a lot of these have, well, they're pretty much all exposed, really. Um, which one do you think is the most likely deck? I, I landed again on Default by Old Man Dingle. First time tongue toy ran well last time out. I think he's just about sets the standard, but who do you like? Oh, I think all of it, his ultimate probably sets the standard. Like he's running mm. the best maidens nowadays by quite a bit, I'd say. Um he was second in a point to point to it's for me. Um mm. the horse and the double grain for I remember that, yeah. Uh, really. The third Rock My Way has won in Britain. Looked like it was going to be quite a nice horse at one time. I think it, it won one of those novices at, at Cheltenham. Um, I think he's definitely the one who sets the standard now. Uh, he, I think he was offered for the time and came back. And he needs to. Take, I think if he repeats some of his performances from last winter, that he takes all the beating here. Oh man, Dingle, he's rated. 109. Um, he's beaten two lengths at Bellius Town behind it. A nice enough one of Cromwell's, I'd say, but I don't think it should be enough to be beaten. He's ultimate high city roller was rated 116 last summer, now 109. I suppose that is factually regressive, isn't it? And yeah, that's the to the law, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, look, walking on a train was second to World of Fortunes, who uh, we spoke quite highly of, and, and she won at the stall last week. Um, mm. she's right 104, she carries 10 down 11. But uh, look, I, I think he's ultimate should be winning this, yeah. I suppose that is fair enough if you go look at the old form. What kind of put me off him, and maybe it's maybe it's unfair because it was his first run in a while. Like D's getaway, who he was admittedly given a lot of weight to a four year old filly, she was only rated 86. Uh, when she won that maiden hurdle, now obviously she's been upgraded, uh, awarded 11 pounds for winning that up to 97. And maybe I, I I didn't look far enough back into the bumper form, into the point to point form, but maybe just really needed to run. Um I can I can see I can take your point. I just like even in a race in a maiden hurdle this week, I, I would find it hard to back a horse I was beaten by something rated eighty six in a maiden hurdle of any standard. But as you as you mentioned, it's um the back form is there if if he's ultimate has came away from that race in better shape. But I will take a chance on old man Dingle. I'll go with the most recent form. Um I think the run behind Mill Force was fine. Um, Arctic Gale in there too, who was well fancied. Emmett Mullins probably will get a win out of that horse. Um, it's fair recent form, but I'll take a chance on Old Man Dingle. Uh, onto the three twenty then deck. The uh, it's a it's a claiming hurdle, <laughs> which is not um yeah this this is a uh, definitely one of the more testing cards that I've um that we'll probably cover as i actually forgot to even oh, skip it to 45. Interesting, it's, not... it's interesting yeah. that's probably the best the best way of putting it two and a half miles and um, this is what racing is like this, this is you know, yeah you're right people that 
there's people that think they like racing I'm just talking about horses rated 160 plus all the time this is racing <laughs> you know anyone can anyone can like a good horse it takes a real man now to like one of these yeah go down get yourself down to clam mel and see, see <laughs> these in the flesh um yeah war correspondent was a horse that i was a, a fan of um in recent seasons probably talked about a bit, a bit about him on the pod last year um he, obviously he's in here for tw- at 12 stone um maybe not quite as good as he was uh but you know we'd fair form up uh, up to a couple months ago who do you like air deck out of the nine um wild shot right at 110 i know, I know he's a 10 year old he's, he's is he the highest rated 110 <laughs> Uh, war no. correspondent is, and and by the same token up there, Russell Sullivan. And but that's but that is right. That they, that's what these races are made for. Those ten year olds are still kind of retain that ability. Yeah. So the older the horse is, the less likely they are to be claimed. You can put them in at these sort of weights. You can win your races. Um, he, like so, yeah, I can see where you're going for wild shot. Absolutely. Yeah, he's only carrying um ten a. Yeah. You know, and he arguably has the best race in form. Mm-hmm. I think. You know, he yeah. wasn't beating bars last few runs. He was toured in August. Look, I know he's a ten year old, but he's he's a horse who's shown more than than the rest of these, I think. So um yeah, I I'd be confident enough about him now. Yeah, he went well for a long way. He's the bet he's the better get he's the better today, is he? No, he, he's not the better today. Or um Jesus, just now, now what are we on race three and um, I think <laughs> Well, I've, I've three winners already. <laughs> he probably did find that at two mile six, just that little bit too far last time out. I think that was the furthest he ever tried in his career. Back to two and a half and into Claim and Company. I can see why you fancy me. Definitely have a chance for sure. Um, if you're if you're confident in him, deck, I'd probably tell you in on him because I, I couldn't make head nor tail of this race. I do usually find when a five year old up there, like War Correspondent or Mr. Wilson, like Mr. Wilson obviously only has 11 four on his back, would definitely have a chance. Uh, but definitely needs to improve on what he's shown in recent times. Well, why are you getting rid of a five-year-old? Like, what, they must hate racing. Yeah, like, they... You know, they're the opposite. That's what I was talking about when I was talking about Kieran Dan and how mm. he loved the game. Like, these must absolutely despise it if they're shown <laughs> a little and, you know, you can't even sell them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you're, you're dead right. Um that it is like that's what you kind of want to look for the older horse off the lower weight that is shown his ability world shot does check that box and um yeah you'd absolutely have a chance there and the claiming uh 320. uh into the 355 uh the darren lower mares handicap hurdle uh just shy of two and a half miles again deck um this isn't a bad old race for the grade there's a, a few uh last time out winners in here um like lucky viv and slip jig so well, yeah, definitely one of the, the better races on the card, actually, in my opinion. Um, who do you like here? There's a um, obviously Storm Along was the one I kind of mm. took a look at towards the front of the market. Inconsistent form, but as I said, very, very important. Is able to stay in this bracket of race uh, and yeah. despite you know just slipping up the weights a little bit. Uh, three pounds for only being beaten ahead last time out of Lestal, but that was probably a strong enough race, um, as well. But who do you like, Deck? Yeah, look. She was one I had a good look, and I, I actually think she can be quite um, consistent. You call her inconsistent, mm. but you know she's. Oh, I meant to say consistent. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, she, I, might, I might have just dropped my words. But three one three last time. Yeah, no, that that's yeah. consistent form. I meant to say she, consistent. It's just a... she's a mare that we would have spoke about um, on the early days mm. of the top last year. Um, she won off hundred and two at, at um, Tremor. She's beat the short head at the stall. She actually finished third. It was on mm. the race that. Um, oh, I can't remember the name. I think of the you winner. tipped the winner, did you? That was, that was it. I can't remember her name. Yeah. Um, and I was, it was a one night standard. One night standard, yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. she got three pounds for that, but you have to remember, she's only beaten the short head there, you know, even though yeah. she's tored. She does have to carry 12 stone here, but not quite like carrying 12 stone in, in December at Clomel when it's it's absolutely bottomless. So, fairly um, right. Look, I, I <laughs> can, I can. She definitely has a chance, yeah. Um, would you? She's a maiden winner. Um, she has she found life tough on her handicap debut, but you know, you might be prepared to forgive her that run and she might have just needed handicap experience and you could see a much improved performance. Cash the check is another maiden winner. <clears throat> she was three lengths forward off this mark the last day. 
Um, she looks a horse who could improve. Mm. I can say being there, there about, but I'll go with Slip Jig, right, 102. She's the least exposed in the race. She won a maiden on her second attempt, and like she looks like the one who could do the most at the moment. So, right. Um, although, is there a first handicap run? I think it is. She only ran four times, two on bumpers, yeah. two on maidens, and she won her maiden. If she takes the handicaps quickly, I can see her winning this well off that mark. Yeah. So, uh, 102, is it? 102. Look, sure, yeah, I, yeah. Although it's a competitive race, I don't think there's anything really lurking in here. You're, you're like, there's nothing too well handicapped. So, you're trying to find a horse who could improve or, or handle the handicap mm. for the first time. So, I'm hoping she does handle, like, handle handicaps better than, um, who was the other one? Would you? handled the fourth yeah. time for winning the maiden so <clears throat> if she has ability off this mark I, I think she'll take all the beating here yeah if I was a betting man which I am I would have thought you were going to tip cash to check because this is her first attempt at two and a half miles now you could maybe make the argument that she was performing adequately enough at two miles and maybe she is a two miler because you know she, uh, she didn't quite yeah. place, like, the gap last time out but Interesting enough that she's up in trip, but again, I, I, I'm not 100% sure she strikes you as a horse that would appreciate further. Some horses are just two milers, you have to remember anyway. Yeah, um, that's especially it, in this game. Mm. I suppose if you're ever going to find those few pounds, it is by stepping up and trip. It's up and trip. The line, but, mm. <clears throat> look, I thought there was lots of angles to approach this one. We yeah. have to choose one. So <clears throat> I like the four of them. Storm along, would you catch the check? But I'll, I'll side with slip jig. All right, I'll be on Storm Along. Um, the inconsistent, apparently, in my book. <laughs> now, my joke, uh, consistent, uh, getting my English mixed up. The consistent Storm Along uh, in recent runs. So, uh, onto the 425 then deck, the Tick and Core Handicap Hurdle. It's an 80 to 95. It's your grade of race. Um, this is a puzzle and a half. Um, like This is not easy at all, as, as it usually is um, at this level. So... <laughs> Where's the best place to start, Deck? Like, we've Man Mandarin Monarch, who we haven't seen in quite a while. We haven't seen him since 2022. He would have absolutely laughed at these if he had if he retains any kind of ability because he wouldn't like he was just too good to run in races of this nature. Now it's a long time since he has run in one of these races, um, or in any race for that matter. 707 days off the track, um, but the handicapper has given him a big, big chance. And sometimes the horses that are not quite the easiest to train the best time to catch them is first time up be interesting to see if there's any money for him uh paul gilligan now has him uh danny gilligan taking the ride and um, don't know if i'd be confident confident enough to back him off such a long layoff deck especially when there's horses in here that are less than half his age uh but who do you like in here yeah no i i couldn't take the chance and if he turns up and wins it'd be great to see and I'd just take that on the chin and, and be happy for no the connection. Um <laughs> <laughs> Gander's Town was in here who I was half given a chance to last week at the stall and it's kind of it's kind of looking at him going, but well, why <laughs> why was I? Um <laughs> hasn't shown anything. I think it was just down to the Charles Bones thing, you know, he could improve in the second handicap. And again, I don't think there's anything really well Handicapped, there's not really laid out here. Um, mm. The one I came down on was uh, Jukebox Rock. Okay. Stayed on over two mile one the last day in the second handicap. And that was after a break and was on good ground. A five year old, it's to be, oh, what are we talking about at Clonmel is a yielding. As of right now, it is, yeah. Like, you shouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't imagine you having much of a problem with that ground now. No, I'd say, look, his previous form, not so good, was on softer. So, um, Showed a little bit more on good ground the last day, and look, I'd say you could see um, an improved performance from Duke Buck Truck. Yeah, it wouldn't be like Gavin Cromwell to do something like that, would it, really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, God, yeah, shades of a. Uh, just when you, whenever I see a horse at, at, from Gavin Cromwell's and at this level of race, I just automatically think of Jouster for some reason. But <laughs> it's, um, well, did, um, did the Florida and Porter run one of these? I don't think he got that low. Um, <laughs> I don't think he got that. Like, how sick do you have to be to get, get oh, Florence Porter? Into, though, I it? think he was, he got to, I think it was 111, maybe not, maybe 108, 109. 
Yeah. I'll have to actually, you're going to have to check that up. Actually, there's actually a good chance he might have actually gotten to that level. I'd have to, <laughs> to double check that. Um, yeah, no, Gavin Grommel, there's no better man for it um, than, you know, bringing a horse. And we like to celebrate that stuff around here. Yeah, that's it. That's, yeah. what, that's how you do it. It's just. Hey, it keeps people in business, you yeah. know. Uh, it's it's the reason normal people can own winners. This, this is what That's the game about is about. Sure, look can't. what they did. They 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 stopped Rangers Football Club to get a few divisions into them, didn't they? And they they yeah. stopped and they, they stopped Birmingham last year. They're running off at League One now. <laughs> they can't yeah, the stop Everton, but they just can't. <laughs> they can't stop Everton. They keep, 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 keep running, running on. on. Keep running on. <laughs> or, or or a horse gets disqualified for breaking financial rules. Yeah. Gets deducted points. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, the four fifty five Glary Andy Calverdle eighty to one hundred two. Um, right, crossing the bar was a much more like it last time out. Um, and and would definitely um have a chance. It's going to be his first run for King Collins. He's coming from the Neil Neil Mulholland yard. Um, quite an interesting runner. I thought deck uh, bodybuilder for Gordon Elliott has first time cheek pieces on with Jay Cohn riding. Um, I think that's his handicap debut as well. It'll be interesting to see if the market speaks of um, anything for him. Uh, but look, a very competitive uh, sixteen runner field with the a with the uh, general Hubble, the reserve number seventeen. Uh, see if he he gets a run. Um, who do you like here, Deck? Um, well, what do you think of uh, Beggar's Rock getting five pound? So I'm second the last day. Yeah. Well, look, I it's. Is that what happened early on in the summer? It, it do you think? think really. Yeah, but that they they landed a huge touch with him, didn't they? Was or was it or did they no, try it to? It, or was it? It was the same colours, wasn't it? It was the same colours. Yeah, same that, colours. That yeah, pound for finishing second. Is that it? It's probably. Yeah, it's probably five, again. Yeah, it's probably five pound for for the application of cash last time out, which which mm. went astray. Um, yeah, no, it's harsh. It is harsh. Um, and Dino Land, who won the race, uh, only got eight pound. So um, and won the race by two and a half lengths. So it, it's it is pretty scandalous. Like if you were to look at that form at face value, um, even though Paddy Elvis, who ran in Perth the next day, now that was off ninety seven, um, he wouldn't be that in Ireland. He's actually only after getting a pound for that. So and the fact that he hasn't really run well in Perth on the next start like that, that looks like a very harsh five pound. And you, you, like obviously with John McConnell, it's brilliant that uh, Dino Land has gone and got to win the race. But that eight pounds is probably going to look exceptionally harsh, and it could be a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. You finally win your race, and then suddenly you get mullered because the horse behind you was gambled off the boards. <laughs> um, so look, that's Irish racing, though, isn't it? Uh, or that's just raising. Like you have to well, accept it. You take it. Take I, it where I, it comes. I also have that Dino Lamb has been behind Cam Dunnett as well. So mm. we're all we're all feeling it's all like, connected. Yeah, mm. we've all got slaps on the wrist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's quite a harsh five pounds. I would imagine you agree. Five um, pound for not being good enough to win is an absolute joke. But he must have been sore mm. following what happened early on in the season. And yeah. then, and then nearly pulling it off here. Yeah, no, I'd agree with you. Um, now, even though your handicap is supposed to be impartial and take, not take that into account, but it's it's hard to see that that something like that kind of hasn't happened here. Um, yeah. yeah, look, I think it is. It's it's tough. Uh, in, per, in retrospect, what you're saying about five pound for not winning, it, that's all relative. Like if you, you know, like in a handicap, you're probably right. But if you run in like a grade two or a grade one and you excel yourself. Um, it might be a little bit different or a maiden hurdle, but uh, oh, no, in handicap, I'm, I'm, in handicap I'm context. About, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about handicaps. Like, you know, mm. if you're not good enough to win, I don't believe you should be punished. I, you yeah. know, a pound, two pounds, you know, I don't think you should be getting, like we got four pounds the last day. Mm. I know we were, I know we were well cleared at tours, but. I suppose yeah, if you're dropping the third, I could kind of see it, but like, yeah, no, it's it, it is. It's harsh. It is. I I know what you mean. Getting four or five pound for not winning is um. Well, if it's, you it's want, really the worst thing that can happen, isn't it? Really, if you, you want people to own horses, hmm. you shouldn't be punishing them for not being good enough to win. Who? Why would you buy a horse if you're gonna nearly win? And you know, like, it's all about winning. Like, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. take it over the world. That's what's that feeling of, 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 of it happening once, like you know, 
Yeah. Um, no, I don't think you know Sandy Shaw has 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 been good to um, small connections. I think over the years, and he, he look he was he was fair enough to us um, early on, but like, I I think five pound is yeah it's 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 ridiculous. Like the horse wasn't good enough to win. Mm. How is the horse going to be good enough to win the next day? Yeah, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Well, look, you never know. He could go in and absolutely laugh at these. <laughs> then we'd have to yeah, delete this side of the mean, podcast. Well, like, no, I know exactly. Not good enough to win off, you know, off one mark. How are we good enough to win? How are we good enough to win off five pound higher? And mm. it's all about. It's all about winning. It is all about winning. It's all about getting connections, get, getting the bug, and keeping racing going. So if you're punishing them. I just, I just don't see how. Like, what, what do you want? Just want, just want Chiefly Park on and all the horses like <laughs> torn up and off ninety foot. The things the bomb Park taking up, yeah. You know, like, it, it, this, this, said it the show, this is this. We said at start of the show. This is what racing is about. This is what Irish racing is about. But this feels a little bit personal. The five pound personal five pound well you're going to back them to carry that five pound to success then deck and uh, there is one i quite like in here i'll I mention in a minute but... <laughs> go on i'll let you uh, go for it i like tullamore lucy um is the one i like um king cullen taking seven pound off i think that's a very uh that's a pretty generous seven pound to take off and uh, never nearer didn't jump at the best kind of fluency at tremor um, I think that was her handicap debut. Uh, it's it's up. She's back up to three miles. She did try it at Wexford in the maiden hurdle, and um, so it's it wouldn't be like a, a special by by any means. Uh, but up and trip and maybe some slightly better jumping. I'd see her. I think go quite close off eighty eight. I would have thought, and I think you'll get a juicy enough price. Um, she is technically up a pound, um, but I, I think that might have had to do with. Um, I think she might have been possibly with a handicap or something. Uh, but she, yeah, she is up a, a pound. I'll try and find out why she's up a pound now. But um, she is off eighty-eight. But I, I don't. I couldn't see that making much of a difference, really. I think that. Um, I think she's got a fair enough chance now up and trip to uh, two furlongs and a second run the handicap. Who do you like anyway, Dick? Yeah, well, look. I suppose we're back at rock mm. up the five pound. Like they've probably found the ideal race. I don't think it's going to take loads of winning. But he is up five pounds, so I'm gonna go for one that's probably gonna be bar to one. And I hope right. I, I hope it's bar to one tomorrow night and goes off eight to one. Um the Dooner Citizen. I don't think this horse was off on handicap debut over two miles six, and it was a return from a break. Hasn't shown loads in its career, but might have just shown glimpses of some kind of ability. When asked to get involved in a race the next day, hopefully mm. Thursday, that he can go and, and, and win a race that doesn't take an awful lot of winning. But this could be a massive price, this one. Um, right. Very little to go on other than <laughs> has never even nearly been off. And yeah. just showed, look, wouldn't win, wouldn't win a hot one it is, or wouldn't, wouldn't win when it gets a really well handicapped one, but might have shown enough to just fall in in, in a race of this quality yeah so. no, I, I know what you mean <laughs> uh, well look that's it it's, uh, the ball was called so probably that's it now the, the, the re- Tullamore Lucy this is actually her handicap debut I got, I got that bit wrong I thought it was a handicap the last time it actually wasn't it was funny enough it was the, it was the maiden hurdle that he's ultimate actually ran in but that was carrying a lot of weight so even though I just said that he probably can't win a maiden hurdle because he was beaten by horse rate 86 um, well, that that mare was, or that filly was actually was carrying a stamp on her back that day. But like, um, this isn't a maiden hurdle. This is a handicap now. So, um, yeah, I think the I think that wasn't a bad run by Tullamore Lucy, and and in the in relative to the grade, she's right in her own grade here, eighty eight. So I'll give her a little chance. But uh, Dak, if that if your one wins, um, that would be one of the all time shouts. We probably have to go back to top two or three, <laughs> where I think that you had you had one from a. Was a point down path. It was the one shot earlier. That was a fair, yeah, that was it. <laughs> Get us on the map. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a bold one though. Uh, anyway, deck the Ravens Rock flat race. Have you have you looked at anything for the Clan Mel bumper? Um, is, is this was this bumper ran out of stall last week? 
I, I, you tell me. Why all these ran at Listow last week, didn't they? Or most of them? Uh, that's what I'm thinking, did they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I don't have to. There's a lot of bumpers at Listow that you have to remember. Yeah. So. <laughs> Someone mm. smarter than me will have to walk out the farm in between all them now and, and have a go with this. But why would why would I be having a bet in this after backing the bar to one winner the race before? I know, yeah. And look, I would have lost a lot of money if I was talking in October of 2024 um, about a bumper at Clamel where the chief piece of form goes through Cappuccino, who was running, who must have run in about 40 bumpers. 40 and he finally bumpers. got his turn. He finally got his mm. turn. Um, at the stall last week after we said what the hell is cappuccino they're still down in a bumper well he was going to win that's that was the answer um right so deck what's your strongest bet in the card then um or, or do you have one? Oh, your strongest bet in the card possibly duke box rock duke box rock for deck I, I, duke box rock. I don't oh. know if i have one. Oh yeah look, like it's it's a I, I like them all i like them all mm. um Imagine having doing the seven timer and six of them rolling on to the owner citizen that barred the one <laughs> after being punted into nine to four. <laughs> I'd probably take Storm Along as my best bet uh, up the top of the weights there, the inconsistently consistent Storm Along. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know what you'd do if, it, if you. <laughs> The, the, was it the Dooner Citizen? Was that the, that, 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 <laughs> the Dooner Citizen? Yeah. 51 lengths beaten by Oscar. That is literally going to be. <laughs> Like that is going to be, I, I can't even change. It's going to be a triple figure price. If that's not at least sixty-six to one, I, I actually have to like, send a send a letter. It in. is going to be big. It is. It going is going to be, be bar. Whoa. It's going to be bar. Whoa. In a race, I mean, listen. In a race that's not going to take an awful lot of winning. Mm. You just like the horse has never been off. <laughs> he just, you know, showed a glimpse the last day that he could be off. You know, they could do something. If Only the 51 lengths <laughs> between him and Glory the last day. But no, I can see what you mean. Um, you, it's not he ran, out, he ran by a few horses at one stage in the race. <laughs> oh, there rubbing your hands together. Showed enough, yeah. Oh, uh, you're going to stick him in our in our tap tracker. I'm actually going to, after this podcast, I'm going to go in because you know who I got an email for this morning? Juno. <laughs> and I need, the horse needs to come out. It's entered every other day. <laughs> and it, it's it's had enough chances, uh, so yeah. Um, I've fences, man. Wait, baby. I've got fences. fences. The, swear to God, uh, the work back. The, the, you obviously seen the track and notification of Baldwin Glass Hill then as well. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I got the very same. Yeah, but it's always any time I look down, it's always it's always an entry for Juno. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, I do have two for Sligo tomorrow. Go on, go on, share them on three three thirty five. Um, mm -hmm. in the Baldwin Glass Hill colours, uh, Colin Wayne. Um, he was a winner of a hurdles off 86 in June. He does have eight lengths to find with Sayuri on here, but um, he's getting a big swing of the weights. I'm not sure where he is. We checked there, but it's it's a, it's enough to put him put him bang there. Um, he's four pound lower than his hurdle winning mark here, so he's mm -hmm. only had four chase starts. He's entitled to go in of this mark, I think. And then 445 Ballast Star. Um, this horse has chased debut, six year old, next second off two pound higher over hurdles. Hasn't won over hurdles in 12, but that was close enough. You know, mm. if he improves for the fence, he should win off this mark. So there'll be a little little double, hopefully. A little that. treble, they have to put in Cam Dana now. <laughs> it's, it's, it has to be a little treble. I don't, I don't treble. need to, I don't need to back the horse anymore. It's just, it's, it's, not about that. It's, it's just you that need that, to back the horse. But you want you want to back the horse. Oh, yeah, I don't right. even want to get lost. You just want them to, you know. First of all, you you want them to come home safe and enjoy himself, and hmm. you want them to win. You know, just want him to win and come in. Yeah. You know, the chest out, and yeah. everyone jumping around, and you know, see see George when he wins. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's beautiful. Like, you know, to see the reaction of George when he wins and. The amount of messages I do get from people who listen to the show and you know people involved in racing or people I've met from racing over the years, like it's it's deadly, but um to 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 see me two little boys, Ken Dan and George. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Ken George Dana and George, not George and Ken Dana, Ken Dana and George. <laughs> George gets worried every time he wins, he's like, um <laughs> 
Uh, is he is uh, am I still your favourite? That <laughs> was it just just just, just about. Ah, no, look, come here, George. Absolutely loves it. It's a big debate. You know, he has to go to school tomorrow. Ah. An awful, be an awful shame if, if the alarm clock didn't go off in the morning and he couldn't go. But no, look, you have to you have to send your children to school. So yeah, no, you do absolutely, absolutely. It's you know, important. It is important, but I tell you, you do some learning. At the racetrack. Oh, you, you do. You learn. You can watch on the telly, you you the telly but there's yeah. no substitute for being there. The things you learn, the things you see. You learn so. fractions. Fractions. You learn how to. You learn money. Uh, yeah. yeah. Calls, <laughs> you know. You know. Uh, you know. You can learn what a furlong is. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Uh, there's there's loads of maths. There's loads of maths. He. he yeah. He's. He's. Time he's between races. You he was calculate that. Ryan hard now tonight. He was. Mm. He was like, you know. I am gone, though, aren't I, that? <laughs> He's got skills, though. Oh, stop. So. God, that's that's brilliant. Um, well, let's hope that Countdown absolutely sluices up by a neck. That, that's oh, the dream. By a short <laughs> head. By a short head. An easy, absolutely. A comfortable short head. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's hope that uh, yeah, Keith Donahue can channel his inner Mark Walsh there. And, 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 yeah, yeah, do, yeah, do that thing he does. Oh, very good. Well, look, I'll be watching as I'll be flat out and work, but I'll have to slip away to, to definitely uh, have a look at good old Cam Donna. But until the next time, uh, very best of luck, Deck, with uh, Cam Donna on Wednesday. Uh, Top 68 will we'll be back pretty shortly. Um, I'm, look, I'm sure we might try and at least we'll get tips up for Gowron anyway if we don't have a podcast. But if not, we will be back very early as the national hunt season now. We're in October, we're in October now, Deck. So now we, um, it starts to get serious again. It's starting to get serious again. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you fairly house the weekend, then punch us down. Fairly house, we've Gowron and fairly house. And it's then... Gowron, fairy house. Yeah, and then we're down royal. Then we're suddenly no, we're no, on no, top no. of down we've... royal nearly now. Like a, that's have, the end of the month, isn't it? Yeah, we have Gowron this weekend. We have mm-hmm. that size in Europe, Chase. Yeah, um, we've that was actually top one. That was top one. Yeah, that yeah, was top one. Yeah, uh, and then we have fairy house. The following Saturday, and then we yeah. have that midweek meeting. Uh, the punch down midweek meeting Tuesday, Wednesday. And for yeah. me, that's where it always feels like we're jump you're racing. back, yeah, yeah, that, absolutely. That's, we're back jump racing there, like you know, it was a couple of great races on that. Like, it's yeah. it's it's the home of Irish national hunt racing. That's where and, some nice uh, horses won one at that. Punches Town meeting as well. Like I think two years ago, we'd Marine National. I think won the maiden hurdle on that on that card at yeah. Punches Town. And then last year, um, wasn't my mate Mozzie. It was those colours though, the, the blue and orange. He was in the Supreme betting for a while, and then he, he petered out of it. But can't remember his name now. <laughs> um, oh, every, Grins with an R. Yeah. Um, oh, red bloody hell. Tackle, my reds. I know the horse to talk about. Yeah, but anyway, it was a nice horse for a while. Didn't quite live up yeah. to it. Might be a nice chaser though. I'll have to try and find it. Well, I, I think uh, there's a great tree chase on that way. There yeah. is, yeah. They're staying a tree mile chase, is there? Yeah, it's a. Yeah, he has. Yeah, uh, Balco the Flow. I remember winning it. Um, I, look, it's usually a trial race, or it's supposed to be a trial race for Down Royal. Um, but I, usually ever it's the daily daily star daily bearer chase or something. There, I think it's called. Um, oh, yeah, but well, look. Really looking forward to it. I think we actually, I, I, just before we leave, that, that that was right. Tap one was this time last year, but I think it was actually last weekend because I think I remember after tap one we were in Birmingham and we were watching Garen. Um, so I think tap is now officially a year old, which is uh, yeah. probably should have done oh, something for our we birthday. We were there for Lauren's birthday. Yeah, yeah, I think we should have done something for our, we should have done something for our birthday. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Uh, anyway, look, it's been a great year. Many more to come. And um, as long as you guys keep liking, sharing, commenting, subribing, all the good stuff will keep supplying the tips to you and bringing us phenomenal, bringing to you guys phenomenal cards like Clan Mel here and then all the, the big action uh, as, as we roll up towards the festivals, Christmas, all the good stuff will be here and we'll be covering it all with a big smile on their face and finding other tap legends, which I can't wait to do in, with the company of yourself, Deck. But as I said, best luck to tomorrow and uh, we'll be back for Tap 68 quite soon. Bye bye. Cheers. Thanks, guys.